Okay, so Luke's going to love my segment that I'm I doing wish, now. Well, I wish that he actually said a question instead of yeah. can you sing a nice Well, maybe tune? he'll give us a question next. All right. Well, hopefully he'll send us a question. You can then... interrupt me if he comes with a question. No, no, no. I think, well, I think we'll do it at the end of your okay, that's fine. segment before okay. we start the next one. Perfect. All right. Okay, so the company that I'm going to talk about is uh, not based in America. Okay. It's based in Australia. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is this is exciting. This is our first Aussie, um, this is our Aussie debut. <laughs> this is cool. And this is the opposite to what you're talking about. This is not a cool little startup. Oh, no. This is, it's an uncool startup. This is a big <laughs> conglomerate monster company. Okay, all right. Called West Farmers. Oh, yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking Bunnings. Luke's going to love that. <laughs> yeah, that's what, I was, <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Um, okay, so th- this company is actually super duper interesting. The more I looked into it, the more interesting it was. And... This is like, uh, it's literally like talking about 20 companies. So I'm going to do my best to try and make it like digestible. Yes. Um, and just tell me if I, if it's getting a bit out of control. I sold my West Farmers um, <laughs> Did you? two weeks ago. Oh, okay. But there yeah, you go. that's right. But Held it for a while. True. Well done. How long? Uh, over a year because year? of, and you know, was it, was it half positive? capital games. Yeah. I, um, yeah. I think I made a, a 42% profit. Yeah. Actually, you should have. That's one of my points here in a minute. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. Yep. <laughs> so um, do you want to guess when they were founded? Uh, nineteen. Mm-hmm. Uh, old, very old. Twenty-three. Ah, uh, fourteen. Nineteen fourteen. Yeah. I was pretty close. I was yeah, gonna say no, nineteen. In the right kind of range. Right in World War One. Do you know where their like headquarters is? Uh, Melbourne. No, it's actually Perth. Oh, Perth. Okay. Yeah, it's really interesting. Cool. Um, so, uh, do you want to guess how many employees they have? Uh, oh, this is going to be... It's going to be big. Yeah, you're, this is every single company that they own. That's yes. kind of how they quantify it. So it's going to be a lot. Yeah. So I'm going to say that it is... Every, all right. So number of employees is going to be... Six figures. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm on it. I'm on it. <laughs> I was going to say 130,000. <laughs> okay. Is that what you're going to say? Yeah. 120. Oh, hey. <laughs> that's close. Okay. So they lost 100,000 employees <laughs> from 2018 to 2019. Okay. But I'll explain it's why. It's the self-serve checkouts. All right, sorry. Yeah, yeah. it's not the self-serve <laughs> checkouts. Um, <laughs> as much as the old people will tell you it is. Yes. Yeah. Um, average management tenure, uh, which I think is important, is three and a half years. So it's, this is ha- like the average amount of time that one of their management... That seems pretty low. Yeah, it is actually pretty low. Yeah. Usually looking for over five would be good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the guy who's the CEO is a guy named Robert Scott or Rob Scott. He has been there for three and a half years. Uh, in sorry, he's Scots been make good. Um, what is it? Scott's make good CEOs. Yep. Sorry. Scott. Continue. Yeah. Uh, and so he has been in his position as managing director and CEO um, for three and a half years. Okay. And do you want to guess his compensation uh, annual? Okay. So I know that our our top of the range yeah. kind of salaries yeah. are something in the twenty five millions for okay. Australian CEOs. Okay. Um, I know Wes Farmers is a massive conglomerate, but... It's seven figures. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm going to say that it's... I was going to say uh, 9.3 million. Uh, 7.7. 7. Ah, oh, not yeah, bad. It's a lot of money. You're getting good at guessing. But when I, <laughs> when I get to the bit where I talk about all the companies that they uh, are associated with, yeah. then you'll appreciate why he gets paid seven and a half million dollars a year. Yes. Because... Um, for him to even know what they all do is impressive, to be yeah. honest. <laughs> yeah, it's like Jim's mowing. <laughs> uh, yes, sure. Yeah, um, <laughs> exactly like that. So he he's actually a silver go- he's a silver medalist in the rowing in rowing. Wow, uh, that's a surprise. Two time silver medalist in rowing yeah. at, at the Atlanta Olympics. Okay, uh, Summer Olympics. I can't remember what year that was, but it's, I think it's before my time. Um, he has a Bachelor of Commerce. Yeah. And he started at West Farmers in 1993. Okay. So he might be an oh, old So he has been there for a long time. No, guy's been there for a long time. And he's basically been uh, the director or manager or head of most of their departments. Okay. Um, which I'll explain in a minute. But So he's definitely been around for well, a long time. Well, that makes you feel more comfortable with the 3.5 as the... Correct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Um, so what I thought would be really interesting is if I just give you a really quick timeline of timeline of the company okay the key thing here is to look at how the motif or like the uh maybe the focus of the company changes yeah because they're not really like uh, i'll talk i'll talk about it and you can see what you think so okay. they were founded in 1914 right yeah first thing if you go to their website and look at their timeline one of the first things that comes up as a, a key date is 1924 10 years later they launch western australia's first commercial radio station Oh, cool. There you go. So random, right? Yeah. This kind of gives you a taste of the randomness of the the companies that they buy and invest in and stuff like that. Okay. 
So then in 1927, they start, a, so this is 24, 27, they start a joint venture uh, with two other um, organizations to, uh, it's, and, it, and they, they're producing um, farmer's fertilizer. Okay. okay. Yeah. And so it's called Cumming Smith and <laughs> Mount Lyle Farmer's Fertilizer. Okay. So they've got a third stake. <laughs> Solid name. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm not laughing. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so in 1931, uh, they actually invented a thing called the bulk wheat transfer vehicle. So imagine, so they're in the agriculture world at this point, right? Yeah. In the 30s. And yeah. so they've got big, massive oh, bins full West of farmers? wheat. Is yeah. that like Western Australia farmers? Yeah. Ah, that's cool. All right. Um, and so they've got these big bins full of wheat and they've got these tra- uh, like these train things. Yeah. Trains? Yeah. Trains. I think we call them trains. Yes. And and so uh, they w- they were struggling with an efficient way to move all of this wheat into the trains. And yep. so they literally they designed this diesel vehicle that just had this. It's like a big a digger, but they suppose they didn't have it back then. And it just picks up all of the wheat hay stuff. Yeah. Puts it into the train. Nice. So that's a notable point. Then a bunch of years later, 1956, they start a um, an organization or a company. They start a company called Clean Heat Gas. Clean Heat Gas. Okay. Yes. And basically, they distribute um, uh, bottled gas and appliances. When they talk about it on the company website, they talk about how um, they were trying to find better solutions for their wives who were cu- cooking in the kitchen at home. <laughs> yep. You know what I mean? That's, that's a 1953, uh, 1956. So that's kind yep. of the vibe back then. Yep. 1977, um, Wes Farmers announces a bid to take over another third of that farmer's fertilizer company. Yep. By this point, it's called CSBP. So they've changed the name, um, and it, obviously we know what it was called before, and that's actually the largest takeover Australia had seen to that point. Yeah. And that's for $60 million. So then in 1979, uh, they actually secure that takeover. Yeah. So two years later, so that's a long process. And so in 1984, they are publicly listed. Yeah. Uh, with an $80 million market cap. Yeah, cool. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then... 90 million. Yeah. 80 million. Uh, 18, uh, 1985, they uh, purchased 50% of Gresham Partners, which they still own, which is a, a finance uh, and kind of money advisory company. Okay. Uh, 1986, 100% acquisition of CSBP, which was that initial um, yeah. farmers fertilization company. So they've now owned the whole thing. Yeah. And uh, then in 1987, 10% acquisition of a company called Bunnings. Hey, there you go. 1989, acquisition of Western Collieries. That's the first time they've purchased a coal mine. Oh, yeah. Okay, so at this point, they own like this farm thing. They own Bunnings or 10% of Bunnings. They own a coal mine. Yeah, now and they finance mo- um, and the, Yes, and the finance yeah. company who I assume are like advising them. Yeah. So it's kind of like, oh, you guys are good. Let's just buy half of the company. Yeah, for sure. Kind of like, um, and then 1991, they move into the insurance game. So they buy a company called Federation Insurance. Okay, yeah. 1993, two years later, Bunnings acquires, so Bunnings itself, that uh, they don't own all of Bunnings yet, but Bunnings acquires a company called McEwen's for $48 million, which was one of the bigger hardware stores in Australia at that time. Yeah. And so that allowed Bunnings to have uh, a store in every mainland state within Australia. Cool. So this is the start of the expansion of Bunnings. Yeah. 1993, uh, there was an acquisition of Dalagetti Farmers, um, which is, again, is it's in the agricultural space and it's adding to their little portfolio of farming uh, services that they offer. Yeah. Uh, 1994, they acquired all 100% of the Bunnings organization. 1994... Uh, they also saw their first Bunnings warehouse store. So the the, uh, yeah. the, kif- yeah. the difference there is they turned from Bunnings store to Bunnings warehouse. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'll talk in a second about how they define the difference. In 2000, they merge um, West Farmers, Dalagetti, which was that um, farming corpor- corporation that I mentioned before, and a third farming corporation um, to take up 35% percent market share in the agricultural merchandising space. Okay. Which I assume is like merchandising is like selling of goods, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's like 
I guess they assist farmers in selling of their products. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm assuming that they're doing. That's cool. So 35% of that market. Which I like is it that we've, so uh, coming back to the analytics for a second, yes. interrupting, sorry. Please but, do, um, please do. The, I like it that we've addressed our, you know, low female uh, watcher issue and <laughs> we've addressed our low Australian watcher because 5% of our audience are from Australia. Okay. So we're getting an Aussie stock in and a woman stock. Perfect. So. <laughs> Perfect. A, w- a woman founder. <laughs> a woman founder stock. <laughs> Uh, also in two th- uh, in the year 2000, acquisition of West Freight Business, um, which is a train freight company oh, yeah. for $585 million. So now they own um, they own a coal mine and they own the freight service. Yep. They purchase another mine, uh, which is called K- uh, Kura Coal Mine for $200 million. 2001, they acquire a company called Howard Smith LTD, which was the other large... Um, they do a bunch of other things, but the main thing for, for these guys was that they, they're another huge hardware company. Yep. And so that doubled the size of Bunnings and gave them access to 400,000 new products under the Blackwoods um, company name, which I'll come to in a second. Um, and that later became their industry and safety division, which I'll, again, expand on in just a sec. Yeah, cool. Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of areas to unpack. Sorry. I'm excited. Um, in 2001, there was a formation of West Farmers Landmark. All that is, is they take the merger of all of those farming agricultural um, businesses that they've acquired and they put it all into this thing called the West Farmers Landmark. That's in 2001. 2003, they sell it, West Farmers Landmark, for $825 million dollars no longer in the farming agricultural space. Okay. Now, in 2003 as well, they acquire another insurance company called Lumley Insurance for $375 million. They acquire in 2006 another insurance company, which is called Crombie Lockwood. In 2006 as well, they acquire another insurance company, which <laughs> yeah. is Australia's largest publicly listed insurance company called uh, OAMPS. Okay. So a lot of insurance. For $700 million. They're so, loading up on so insurance So I don't company. know if you've counted it, but it's probably four or five insurance companies that they've bought at this point. Yeah. Uh, then they sell Australian Road Group, which, uh, which is, sorry, they sell Australian Railroad Group, which was that, remember when they bought that train yeah. company? They've yeah. sold it. $1.3 1. billion they sell that for, rebranded. Yeah, cool. yep. 2007, they acquire Coles for yes. just under $20 billion, which is Australia's biggest corporate takeover to that date. Yep, so they've done, they've done two of the big, Correct. The biggest takeover. Because that includes times. Coles, Kmart, Target. Yes. All within that Coles group. Yep. Uh, 2007 as well, they acquire... Uh, Lind Gas, which... Yeah, we're good. We're going. Okay, we're almost there. Okay. <laughs> okay, so 2007, they acquire uh, Coles for just under $20 billion, which is Australia's largest uh, corporate takeover to the point again, second time. That's Coles Kmart Target. Yep. And then 2007 as well, they acquire a company in Australia called Lind Gas, which they changed the name to uh, Core Gas. Subsequently, I'll talk about about that in a second as well. Um, 2008, they raised $3 billion, which is $650 million worth of senior notes. So that's like a bond that gets paid back before a bond. Yes. (laughs) And uh, $2.5 million of renounceable rights issues to current shareholders. Okay, yeah. So that's, that's in 2008. That's in 2008. Right. Three billion. 2009, the, a year later. The, picking the bottom of the market. $4.6 billion raised again. Yes. Off which is low. just a rights issue and placements. Okay, yeah. Um, so heaps more. Uh, I guess everyone's just getting diluted at that point. Yeah. Um, 2011, they sell Premier Coal, which I had a look at because <laughs> they've rebranded this thing to Premier Coal. I was like, well, which coal mine was this actually? And... It was the one that they bought a while ago called Collier Coal, and they sell it for $297 million. And uh, does it say, did I take note of how much they paid for Collier Coal? Let me just check here. Uh, no. Okay, continue. Uh, and so in 2014, we're almost there now, they, they sell all of their insurance broking businesses wow, for $1 months. billion. Dollars. Uh, where, and in when? Sorry. 2014. 2014, okay. So they've sold one of their coal mines, 2011. Yeah. 2014, they sell all of their insurance businesses. Yeah. Also in 2014, they make the purchase of Workwear Group for $180 million. Okay. Uh, which is comprised of Hard Yakka, a whole bunch of different uh, yeah, companies yeah, like that. Ones. Right. Yeah. And so in 2016, two years later, they make an acquisition of Homebase, which is uh, the U- one of the UK's largest hardware stores for $700 million. Yeah. 
And then in 2017, the first UK Bunnings store opens, right? So their intention here is they can take the model that they do here and in New Zealand of Bunnings warehouses, buy a bunch of warehouses over there in the UK, turn them into Bunnings booths, right? Yep. I don't know if you've got um, you've got this at all, but um, something I've heard before okay. that's super interesting okay. is that um, a lot of Bunnings type stuff in the UK um, fail because... Yes, I'm going to get to yeah, that. Yeah, sorry. Yep, yep. <laughs> You go. So pretend I didn't say no. Anything. What you're saying is absolutely correct, and so in a second I'll mention it. Yeah. So 2018, they sell the second mine, which they paid 700 million dollars for. Uh, no, that's wrong. They sell the second mine that they purchased for 700 million, and they paid back in 20, 2000 uh, 200 million. Okay. So, so they made uh, 500 million in 18 years. Yeah. I don't know. That's okay. I guess that's not. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I don't know. And it's better than uh, the uh, home base purchase, which I'll explain in a second. Yeah. It's better then than making al- a loss. Also in 2018, <laughs> they sell home base for $300 million, which is a loss of $400 million. Yes. Because what you're saying is correct. They they had the intention of rolling out um, Bunnings in the UK. It didn't work. Yeah. So they ended up selling it back to a UK-based company. Yes. Do you have any more information? Well, what I was going to say yeah. is that... Um, it's a different culture of DIY. Oh. Uh, so they... Um, well, it's always cold and rainy, so no one wants to go outside. Yeah. So in, <laughs> in Australia, he- there's heaps more D- DIY culture. Yeah. Um, and in the UK, they definitely don't... They, they want to do the projects, but they definitely want someone else to do them. So yeah, it's right. very much a culture of, yeah, so I'll, I'll hire someone to do this. They're lazy? Yeah, I don't know. I guess it is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could say that. Yeah. Well, cold and... It's cold and rainy. Cold and rainy weather makes you lazy. Who wants to be outside yeah. trying to paint your house and it's no like you, oh, 200 days of the year, you can't even do it? No, you know? no. <laughs> so it's not really their fault. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's 2018. They sell home base. They lose 400 mil. In 2018 as well, they demerge coals um, from their conglom- conglomerate. Yes. And coals commences trading on the ASX separately. Then in 2018, they sell Kmart Tire and Auto Services, which they originally purchased with coals. Uh, to Continental for three hundred and fifty million dollars, which is a two hundred and seventy million dollar profit. Yeah. Then in twenty nineteen, they Continental's acqu- the tire company, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. So if you see them getting around, that's owned by Continental now. You probably see all the Continental tires out the front. Yeah. Um, twenty eighteen acquisition of Geeks to You. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> which now sits under the uh, OfficeWorks brand. Uh, 2019 acquisition of catch.com.au. Do you know that? Oh, uh, yeah, catch? yeah, catch. That's <laughs> I cool. I didn't know, I that. know that. Yeah. $230 million. And last one is 2019 acquisition of Kidman Resources for so 700. Catch, catch is worth $230 million. In 2019, that's, hey, that's what they pretty paid. cool. Yeah. If you think about it, it's a, it's a page mm. where someone's just gone and found a good deal. Yeah. And then reposted it on their page and they make some money from that uh, arbitrage or whatever. It's like, it's a, um, is it? Yeah, yeah, that's well. They get they get the they get the deal done. They like arbitrage the difference, don't they? Mm. I don't know. Well, you you can explain. I it think it's more like I think it's more like um, Cause it's TK ca- Maxx online. Well, it used to be Catch of the Day, so I don't catch know. Catch of the changed. Day. Yeah, I think. Oh, uh, it's di- is it different now? Maybe the, the it maybe it was one, like that. Well, it used to be one dealer, but they day. have warehouses and stuff now. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, All so right. it's a, it's it's a lot more involved, I think. Okay. Yeah, it used to be just one thing a day came up and... Oh, no, it's not that. Okay. No, no, it's definitely changed now. Okay. Um, So the acquisition of Kidman Resources is the last one I've got here, which is for 700, uh, just over 700, almost $800 million, actually. And that's, what's Kidman Resources? Good question. That is the (laughs) company that owned 50% of Mount Holland Lithium Project, which is a lithium mine in Western Australia. Now, let me just break down some of the things that I've mentioned that I said I would break down. Okay. Um, Or actually... (laughs) It's just so big. Sorry. Um, so <laughs> this basically, is a, this is a really deep dive. I like it. <laughs> I know it's a lot deeper than my my one. <laughs> so well, yeah, it's a it's a deep company, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so um, so they started in agriculture, moved to financial services, kept that. Then they moved to hardware, coal mining, insurance, train freight, a uh, bit more coal mining, bought some more hardware. Then they sell all of their agricultural farming. They buy some more insurance. They sell the train company or train freight company. They start retail business, so which is Coles. They buy the natural gas business, uh, which is the Lint company. Uh, and then they sell all of their coal mines, all of their insurance. They buy workwear. They buy more hardware in the UK. They then sell the hardware in the UK. They sell the rest of their coal mines. They essentially sell Coles. They sell Kmart tires and repairs. 
they start the tech support or they buy the tech support company, which is the geek to you one. That's so random. I, I think I'd rather have an insurance company than an IT. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> they uh, online discount retail, which is catch and then um, lithium mining project. Yeah. So that's kind of like the quick timeline of what they've done. Now, a quick breakdown of what it looks like right now in time for okay, them yep. is um, Bunnings Group, which was... Uh, Bunnings is really interesting in itself, right? So it was founded in 1886. Yes. It's a long time ago by Arthur and Robert Bunning. There you go. And the it, Bunnings. it was previously known before before West Farmers bought it. It was previously known as Bunning Bros. Bunning Bros. How okay. funny is that? All right. What are, they, what are the names? Robert and Arthur? Uh, R- Robert and Arthur Bunning. Okay, yes. Bunning Bros. Makes sense. Makes sense. So um, right now there's 285 Bunnings. And so they call Bunnings the smaller format regional metro markets. They are trying to open two to four per year. Yeah, wow. Okay. Um, they have 15 Bunnings warehouses, which okay. is a different thing. They're large format, often multi-level. Yeah, okay. Multi-level? Okay. Yeah. Oh. Have you seen one? I don't know if I've ever been to a okay, multi-level I've, I've Bunnings. I've been to one. I've been to one in Sydney. Okay, right. Uh, yeah, the trade and stuff is all on the top level. Wait, so are you saying that? Are you saying that in Newey we've never seen an actual Bunnings warehouse? I'm saying they're often multi-level, but they're always large format, and okay. I'm not sure. But you can tell because on the website when it breaks it down, oh, yeah. it's they actually the 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 actual markings on the outside is different. Luke would know about this. He's it literally says Bunnings, or it says Bunnings warehouse, <laughs> like painted on the outside. <laughs> Uh, and so the last one they have is Bunnings Trade. Oh, here we go. Hang on. Can I... Um, yeah, here yeah. we go. Luke yeah. says, I love Bunnings. Explanation, explanation, explanation. And then he said, yeah, 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 yeah. And then... Yeah. And then he said, Kay. question, how many Bunnings th- stores do West Farmers own? Which we went across there. Yeah, we did. And then he guessed 350,000. What? Which he sa- and then he said, dang, I'm so far off. <laughs> 350,000? <laughs> That's what he guessed. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what <laughs> ratio that is to people in Australia, but it sounds like it's probably like twenty people per Bunnings. Yeah, three hundred and fifty thousand. <laughs> Dang, I'm so <laughs> far off. <laughs> um, okay, okay. Uh, and so then they have three Bunnings Trade stores, which are just Bunnings Trade. Yep. Um, and then obviously Bunnings Trade is operates within the other Bunningses, but there's three stores which are just Trade. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And so the format that they call that is D I F O T. Oh, yeah. Okay. Which is delivery in full on time. Okay. Yeah. That's what they call it. And they yeah. have two... Subs- I knew it would be some giant... Ac- yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so. They have got two subsidiaries, um, which is Adelaide Tools, which they own. They yep. acquired it mid-2020. Yeah. Um, and actually, the ACCC raised concerns about like anti-competitive behavior. Yeah. Um, but they ultimately went unopposed, and so they purchased it yeah. um, uh, somewhere around a year ago. You got anything on uh, Masters? No, I don't. Okay, because that's um that's an example of competitive anti-competitive behavior. Well, it's an example of something completely failing. Yes, its rollout. Yes, and then being bought by Bunnings. Yes, and then yeah, which is kind of funny. It's true, um, and then they also own uh, within the Bunnings Group, they own Valley Investments, um, which is an asset management company. I don't. I could not find anything on that company. Okay. If you can find something, tell me. I don't know what. It, oh, I don't know what they do. Initially, I thought, oh, it's probably the company that like owns all of the um, physical properties. Yeah. But it's not. There's another company. Okay. So I don't know. Okay. So that's Bunnings. Yes. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, this is so intense. And so there's Kmart Group. Okay. All right, Kmart. Yeah. Kmart. Do you want to guess how many stores in Kmart Group? Which is Kmart and Target. <laughs> it's not 350,000. No, it's not. <laughs> it is more than Bunnings. Yes, I did expect it to be more. Okay. I was going to say, uh, I'm going to say 650. Oh, 514. Oy. And 50,000 employees. 50,000, okay. Yeah. Yes, so Kmart itself was established in 1960. That's Kmart and Target. That's Kmart and Target, okay, yeah. Yes. So um, I c- I'll break them down for you. So Kmart has 231 stores. Target has 289 stores. Okay. The interesting thing here is, which I'll show you in a sec when we get to the figures, is that Target is actually the one that's failing for them at the moment. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Yes, Target. Target is the one that for, th- for them is failing. Yep. Kmart has this aura about it at the moment. If you talk to like a, I don't know, a 15 to 25 year old person. Yeah. They who is like has her own house but doesn't want to spend heaps of money on it. Yeah. They're always talking about Kmart. Yeah. I don't know if you have... People love Kmart. They love Kmart, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and so Target began as a drapery store in 1926. Drapery? Drapery. They've got 13... Like a, like a curtain? Yes. Yeah. Like a ch- okay. curtain store. And yeah. they currently have 13,000 employees. Uh, and catch.com.au, they have two fulfillment centers, both in Victoria. Oh, cool. 
so that's interesting. Uh, Officeworks is 27 years old, uh, 168 stores, 9,000 employees, 40,000 products. Yes. And within Officeworks... They sell good paper too. Yeah, they do. We have some of their paper. <laughs> yeah. uh, within Officeworks, uh, they own a subsidiary called geeks to you which yes. i mentioned earlier yeah which is on-site tech support. that's a very american thing uh to have a an it company inside an office store it does seem or, american yeah, doesn't it like a best buy store or whatever yes it's i think it seems american because in australia it it seems reverse like because like the retail like who, who with an it degree wants to essentially work for a retail company. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Well, yeah. I think it's very common to have little IT firms yeah. around everywhere yeah. that are very much not a part of a supermarket. Yeah. That's the that's yeah. the issue. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's their retail space. Now, West Farmers has another division called West Farmers Chemicals, Energy, and Fertilizer. Okay. Yeah. And so within this, remember we, I mentioned CSBP, which they purchased over two or three stages. They owned a third of it, then they purchased another third, and then they purchased all of it. Yes. So they obviously own that, and they do industrial chemicals like ammonium nitrate, and then they also do agricultural fertilizers, which I don't know, I think you put in for soil to make it more fruitful or something. I don't know. Um, so they own CSB... Good insight. Thank you. That's <laughs> how I know a lot about farming. <laughs> okay, so West Farmers Chemicals, Energy and Fertilizer own six companies. So C CSBP is one of them which is chemicals and fertilizers. Australian vinyls, which make resins, which are used for piping, cable insulation, floor coverings and packaging. Within Australian vinyls, they own a subsidiary called Wood Mod Technologies, which is kind of like that fake timber that Luke used on that job uh, last oh, week. Yeah, yeah. So they make like wood composites, which are made from recycled and plastic. And uh, it's oh, like cool. decking with oh, less maintenance. Eco, um, it's like Eco Deck. Right, Eco Deck is like yeah. a competitor. Yeah. So Wood Mod Technologies is ultimately owned by West Farmers. Um, AGR, which is Australian Gold Ringgits. This oh. is really interesting. So Ringgits. Yeah, so C CSBP, which is owned by West Farmers, they own 75% of this organisation or this company. Um, they've been operation, operating for 30 years in Western Australia, and it's Western Australia's only manufacturer of sodium cyanide. Now, sodium cyanide <laughs> is used to extract gold from ore. Uh, okay. okay. Yeah. And so they produce over 90,000 tonnes per annum, and they're one of the top five producers globally. Wow, okay, cool. This is interesting. Yeah. Uh, QNP is the uh, fourth company within the West Farmers Chemical Energy and Fertilizer Conglomerate. <laughs> okay. And um, <laughs> that, that stands for Queensland Nitrates. And CSB, CSBP owns 50% of QNP. <laughs> if you're still following, you're doing really well. <laughs> I'm struggling, so <laughs> any audience members out there, I'm, I'm impressed. <laughs> I'll send you my notes. <laughs> um, and so QNBP, <laughs> sorry, QNP. <laughs> you can't even follow. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, they're an Australian-based ammonium nitrate facility. So it, from what I can tell, they uh, also make more of these industrial chemicals. And uh, so that's that. I assume it's just a, it's a, just a, a play to, to build that space for them. Um, and then the fifth company is called Clean Heat, which I mentioned really, really early. They formed this thing called Clean Heat Gas yep. uh, in like the early 1900s. Um, so it's been going for more than 60 years. And they do, um, so this is something that they actually started as opposed to purchased or acquired. Oh, yeah. So natural gas to the home, LPG um, for cooking um, and stuff like that. Um, they're a Western Australia electricity supplier. So I didn't know this, but in Western Australia, Businesses with over... So this is so random. <laughs> Businesses with over 50 megawatts of power per year used annually um, can apply to use... Um, they can apply to contest the supplier that supplies their business with power. Okay. And they can, they can um, choose to apply... Sorry, they can choose... No, they can apply to choose <laughs> which supplier supplies their energy. Yeah, okay. And yeah. so clean heat can supply it for them. Uh, they own quick gas, which I don't know if you've ever seen. Sometimes at the servers, oh, yeah, yeah. there's quick gas, and yeah. it's like the little swap and, uh, swap, swap and go. Swap and go. Yeah. So they own that. Um, and then they own another thing called Envol LNG, which is liquefied natural gas, which I don't know what you do with it, but I think it's used for transport and power generation. Yeah. Anyway, uh, and so the sixth company under um, the West Farmers Chemicals, Energy and Fertilizer Group is this, and this is really, really interesting, is um, Covalent Lithium, okay? Covalent Lithium is the business that they have termed 
which owns 50% of the Mount Holland Lithium project that I mentioned in 2019 they purchased. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So um, the the Lithium project generates 45,000 tons of Lithium hydro hydro hydroxide per annum. Um, and they both extract it, process it, and refine it to a finished product. So West Farmers acquired Kidman Resources in 2019, which I mentioned, for like almost 800 mil. Um, and they paid shareholders 100, uh, sorry, $1.90 uh, per share for that. So CSBP owns 50%. The company that owns the other 50% is really interesting. It's a company called SQM. Have you ever heard of this company? I haven't heard of it. So SQM. So I, was just, I, 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 was, I thought of a segment title um, for, no. the, for the YouTube um, Oh, bit. perfect. <laughs> How many companies does West Farmers even own? <laughs> anyway, yeah. <laughs> so, so SQM, which is the other 50% shareholder in this lithium um, project, is, uh, it's like a, uh, I'm not sure if it's, it's, some, it's a Spanish lithium mining company yeah but they are the largest uh, with lithium mining company in the world yeah okay and so they have like for example they have an eight-year deal with lg to supply all of their lithium for all of their products oh cool um and so that's kind of cool use, uh, there. Yeah. yeah so lots of batteries for them okay so that's their retail um their um energy and chemicals and fertilizer arm yes and then um the third one is west farmers industrial and safety Okay. Within this arm of West Farmers, there's 3,900 employees, which is a lot less than the other two. Yes. Um, and there are, let me just see, one, two, three, four businesses. Okay. First one is Blackwoods, which I mentioned a while ago. They, it was part of an acquisition. Yeah. It's been around for 140 years, and it's Australia's largest provider of industrial and safety supplies with 200,000 products. And so they just do like safety glasses and safety boots and yep. all that kind of stuff, you know? Um, and... Uh, uh, Green Cap is the second company within this arm of West Farmers. They were started in 1984. They were acquired by West Farmers in 2013 for $21 million. And it's the largest risk management compliance company in Australia. Yeah, right. Which is interesting. 360 employees, 10 offices. Yep. Core Gas. Core Gas was a company that they um, acquired in 2007 for $500 million. Yep. Um, and it was formerly named Lint Gas. Now, Lint Group... L I N D E yeah. is like a big global company, but they were trying to merge a globe. They were doing a global merger with Bock. Have you seen Bock? B O C. Yeah, I think so. Bock yeah. with Bock group. And so the A triple C um, nicely, or I don't know, they asked them if they would divest um, of their Australian business. Otherwise it would completely eliminate the competitive yeah. um, space here in the, the gas sector. So it sometimes it's also like, why don't you give it a try? You know, you you come and buy these businesses. Then True. Like who's gonna <laughs> like? True. Someone's gonna do it. <laughs> um. So that yeah. went up for sale. Yeah. Um. And West Farmers purchased uh, Lint Group Australia, which they returned Core Gas, and they do like oxygen, and nitrogen, ar it's argon, krypton, and it's for like automotive, aviation, calibration, construction, food and beverage. It's like in beer, like how do they carbonate beer, stuff like that. Yeah, right. Healthcare, mining, 3D printing, stuff like that. Okay. And then the last one, uh, the last business within this arm of West Farmers is Workwear Group, which they purchased in uh, 2014 yep. um, but for $180 million, which back in the, in the day, Workwear Group originally supplied the uniforms for the Australian Defence Force in World War II. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Right? And so brands include like King G, Hard Yakka, Stubbies, Bates, Wolverine, Totally Workwear, NNT, Incorporate Workwear, yep. all these workwear brands. Uh, and they provide like an end-to-end -end solution. So they like make the product or they design it, make the product, sell it to you, put it in a shop so you can come and have a look. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Um, and they manufacture more than a million units per annum and ship to more than 30 countries. Yep. So it's pretty amazing. Um, and, <laughs> and then so Coles, right? Yeah. So they purchased Coles and then um, they demerged they, yeah, they demerged Coles uh, from West Farms in 2018. Yeah. And then Coles listed on the ASX, as I mentioned. West Farmers retained 15% of Coles. Okay. And then in 2020, they sold 10%. So they now only own 5% of Coles. Okay, yeah. Uh, the rest of it is, I don't know, general shareholders and other organizations and stuff. Now, the, another really interesting one is, remember I was talking about properties, like who owns all the properties 
that Bunnings Warehouse oh, yeah. have, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a company called BWP Trust, which was established in 1998. Yes, I've heard of this. Have you? Oh, yeah. cool. So BWP Management um, is the responsible entity for the trust. Yeah. And it's wholly owned by West Farmers. And West Farmers owns 25% of the units in the trust. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, and the trust has 75 properties. I think uh, 68 of them are Bunnings, warehouse properties. And it's worth $2.5 billion. Yeah. And just under 250 hectares of land. Gresham Partners, which I mentioned at the start, which they purchased is a financial advisory and funds bi- management business, um, and they own fifty percent of that since nineteen eighty five. Oh, they're still going with that one. Yeah, so yeah, that's so still they got out of insurance. But insurance, they kept, um, they kept that in finance. Yeah, that's right. And then the last one um, is Westpine Industries, which is a softwood sawmill, which West Farmers owns fifty percent off. I'm okay. going to assume probably makes a lot of the timber in Bunnings. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> that is the vertical that, integration, right? Yes. There. So that's yeah. a lot of um, vertical acquisitions. You can have a I breath assume. now after all those companies. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> 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 um, so just in regards to just West Farmers now, their performance. This is just the easy stuff. So in 2020 financial year, um, now you can tell me this. I can't say I've done a lot of research into Australian companies. Okay. Every time I've researched an American company, they usually call the end of the year December. From what I could see. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. But when I was looking at the financial reports for West Farmers... It's always the 30th of June. They were calling it the 30th of June. Yeah, is yeah. that like a difference between the two countries? Uh, well, I don't know about... I um, I didn't know about the December thing. Um, oh, really? But oh, you just assumed they were all... I thought they were June all... 30. Well, I thought everything ends in June 30. But okay. um, but yeah, you you might be right. I just don't, think, sure. I don't think about it like that. I just, okay. I just take whatever is the June number for an American company and, okay, and use enough. that. One thing that's different is yes. that... Um, uh, we report like in Australia we yeah. report uh, every six months and they report quarterly oh um, cool I noticed that as stuff. well yeah yeah right which I think is good because it for Australia yep. because I think it incentivizes long term growth yep. as opposed to yep. quarterly earnings because yep. you can literally just have you know a bad quarter and a good quarter yep. and then turn out alright yep. you know yep. um, yeah that's true actually isn't it yeah okay that's interesting yeah. so for the 2020 financial year so ending June 30 yes the revenue was up 11% yep. to $31 billion. Uh, their net profits um, after tax was up 82, uh, sorry, 8.2% um, to $2.1 billion, yep. which is pretty good. Keeping a little bit of that through $31 billion. Um, and this is just an interesting metric in the space we're in, or like the time we're in at the moment. Indigi- it, sorry. <laughs> Indigenous team members yep. up 12% to yeah, 1,858. Um, one thing... Which I was unsure about is... Is that across the whole, com- the whole company? The whole company. Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. It's, um, it's not many when you look at the whole company. Oh, well, yeah, but as but a, as a pr- proportion of the population of indigenous people as well. That's true. Probably not too bad. That's true. Yeah. Um, so they have um, they have a fair bit of... Sh- they, so they're, for their quick ratio, for example, so their cash and receivables versus their current liabilities. Yeah. So stuff they're going to have to pay soon versus what they have on hand. They have double the amount of current liabilities as quick cash. Yeah. So maybe a little bit of a concern. I'm not sure. I'm sure they're well, fine. Well, yeah. I think personally, I think that rates are all time lows. Right. Um, so I'm not. I wouldn't be that so worried it about matter. it. Either it's just leveraging. You know, fair. It's okay. So they're playing keep that. It, keep it moving. Okay. But fair enough. Yeah. Sales growth uh, for the same period. Um, this breaks it up into the different departments. So Bunnings uh, was up 14 percent. Yep. Kmart up five percent, Target okay. down three percent. Yeah, and Officeworks up twenty percent. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh well, a lot of people working from home. Exactly. Yeah, got to get their own supplies. Exactly right. And so the last thing is the share price. So uh, they listed on the exchange in uh, November nineteen eighty four with a market cap of eighty million dollars. Price of a dollar eighteen. Post split price, they did a split. Okay, I didn't realize, yeah. but they did a split very very early on. Um, and uh, their dividend that they paid was six cents per share, which is five percent in the very early days, nineteen eighty four. Yeah. Current price? Do you have any idea? Uh, Forty two dollars. Actually, fifty six. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Taking into account the split, it's one hundred and twelve. Ah. Sorry, I just realized. Sorry, <laughs> pointing, <laughs> pointing at you. <laughs> I just realized that I haven't sold my um, oh. West Farmers. Okay. I've got it set for fifty six six. And really? it got to like 56.4 the other day. <laughs> wow. Um, but I just have had it set for weeks. True. Yeah. 
Okay, interesting. Anyway, might not sell it now. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> um, they have um, $1.1 billion outstanding shares. So the current price is $56, taking into account the share split, which was just a two to one. Uh, it's $112. Yeah. And outstanding shares is $101 billion, which makes the market cap of... Do you want to have a guess? Or you can calculate it? Uh, I've got no idea. I'm not going to calculate it in my head. Okay. I'm going to say um, $80 billion. Uh, uh, close. $61 billion. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Uh, only $19 billion off. Okay. Um, and they currently pay a dividend of $1.68, which is 3%. Yes. Which I don't know much about dividends because I don't own yes. any companies with dividends. One thing you should it doesn't know, seem like very much. Well, one, one thing you should know with um, Australian shares is that uh, dividends are ultra common because yes. the tax is different from yes. the US. They're, we're incentivized to get dividends here. They're yes. incentivized to not get dividends there. Correct, because they double so, tax them in the US. Yeah, so it's a it's an old switcheroo. Um, 3% is good considering is it good? that... Okay. Well, 3% is good considering that their share pr- the dividend percentage is a function of how much the price um, has kind of moved. Yep. So if the price is up 40% since last year, yeah. which I don't know what the, how much the price is up. I don't, I don't know. know if you know. So if oh, it's up yes, 40% I do, I do last know. year, that means it would have been a... S- it would have been a 5% dividend, equivalent of 5% dividend last year. Yeah. Now it looks like a 3% dividend. Oh, I see what Because, you're yeah, it's I the see. same dollar amount. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. Um, the market cap, so no, that's what we're saying. Uh, so, growth, that's what you asked? Yes. So, from March 2020, um, which was obviously a bit of a dip, yep. to now... Um, it's up over eighty percent. Yeah, yeah. See, um, so, so it's up over eighty percent. So if it was up a hundred percent, that means a six percent market cap, six uh, percent dividend would become a three percent dividend. Yes. Okay. Which means it was close to six percent. True. Yeah. Um, and then as we finish ownership, so less than one percent individual insiders. Rob Scott, who's the CEO, is one of those insiders. He owns nineteen million dollars worth. Yes. Um, less than one percent employee share scheme. So they do have some sort of scheme. Yeah. Uh, and w- less than 1% private companies, 22% yep. institutions, 77% general public. Luke told me about the um, scheme they have. I don't, I don't think it's great. Oh, what is it? I don't know. It's not a, it's not a bonus. Okay. It's a salary sacrifice thing. Re- oh, you can um, choose to... Oh, really? So it's like, it's a bit lame yeah, compared lame. to... I would rather have like a $10,000 share bonus. But yeah. I mean, who wouldn't? But <laughs> um, So that here ends the West Farmers conversation. Um, cool. What do I think? I think it's a right. really, really, really cool company. Yeah. I love the idea of just like I buying and selling companies and running them better and changing the name and adi- yeah. merging them with other companies. Yeah. And I think it's cool. It's a it's a very private equity thing, but yeah. done in a public company, which is yeah, cool. It's a public cool. conglomerate. There you go. All right. Here's, um, 